Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 13 of my C++ video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk a lot about using some functional techniques inside of C++. So I'm going to talk about things like passing functions of functions, vectors of functions, and you guys also asked for some more complicated problems, so I'm going to include those as well. Like always, all the code as well as the transcript of this video is available in the description underneath this video, and if you haven't watched any of the other previous parts of this tutorial series, you probably should, otherwise you will be confused, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so here we are. Now, a lot of people don't know this. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a simple function and I'm going to call it malt by two. And basically it is going to receive a double. And then what it is going to do is quite simply multiply whatever it received times two and return that value. Okay, so that's boring, but we're going to do something more uh, interesting here. So let's just get rid of all this stuff up here. All right, so what I want to do here is I want to show you something that might be surprising. You can actually store functions as variables and you can just use auto in this situation and you could go times two, for example, is equal to and then just reference the function name and there you go now you have stored that inside of a variable now that might seem like it's not that exciting but you can do some really cool things uh, first off I'm going to go and print out the calculation that we have here so I can just go times two and pass a five inside of it and then we can do a new line obviously and you can see that all of this stuff works all right five times two is equal to ten all right so you might think well that's not that important well let's go and do something even more complex and i promise you by the end of this tutorial you will be saying yeah that's pretty complicated stuff so what we're going to do now is you're also going to be able to receive other functions inside of a function so what this guy's going to do I'm gonna call it do math and what we want to do is we want to pass a function into it now to do that what you need to do is go standard function and then you're going to list the return type for whatever that is and then you're going to list the the return type for the function that's going to be passed into this function and then what you're going to do is also and that is this right here and then you're going to list any attributes in this situation there is only one however and then you're going to end that guy all right so we're not just going to receive that we are also going to receive a number so let's go and throw that inside of there and there we go so what this guy is going to do now is it's going to take the function well i'm going to go up here and throw function inside of here all right so there we are let's go and throw that on the next line so you can see it all right so it's going to receive a function and it's also going to receive a value and it is going to call that function and it's going to pass that value into it so what we are going to do then down inside of here is we're going to set this all up and i'm going to in this situation i'll say something like six times two is equal to and and come down here and then i can just call do math and then i can go and take times two which is defined as a variable up inside of here also pass in our six and then a new line and you can see that it's going to be able to perform that calculation as well so that's how we can pass functions into functions also pretty neat stuff another thing you can do is you're actually going to be able to store functions in a vector so let's go and create another function that we have here i'm going to call this multiply by three and double and num and guess what it's going to do if you thought well it's going to take the number and multiply times three and return it well you are correct and what we're going to do down here is we are going to store different functions inside of a vector so to do that i need to go and create a vector and then inside of it i'm going to define the structure for my function just like i did before which is going to be that it's going to have a return type of a double and it is going to receive a double and the only thing here the caveat is that you are going to have to use functions that have the same return type as well as the same attributes for this to work and i'm going to call this funks and i'm going to say that there's going to be two stored inside of it then what we can do 
is we can just go funks and reference by index and say that this is going to be equal to multiply by two and then funks uh, one is going to be equal to multiply by three all right and those are stored inside of there and what we're going to do is we're going to output some information and that is going to be uh, that two times 10 is going to be equal to and then we can just go and reference the vector that we have here by the index and then pass in our value that we also want passed into our function. And there we go, and there we go, and you could see that that also worked. And of course, if you went and put index, well, let's just do it. There it is, and there it is, and now you can see it's 30. All right, so cool stuff. And that is going to bring us to our very first problem. Now, the problem that I want you to solve is I want you to create a function that receives a list as well as a function. And the function passed is going to return true or false if a list value is odd. And the surrounding function will return a list of said odd numbers. Okay, so that is enough information for you to go ahead and do it. And you can pause your video now. Or what you can do is I'll show you what's going to be in the main function to give you a tip. All right, so what we're going to do here is we are going to create a vector. Once again, if you want to pause and try to solve it, go for it. And of course, everything is free uh, with, in regards to, you can go on the internet and you can use the internet to try to solve these problems. I'm not restricting you only to what I have. All right, so here we go. We created a list of vector values, integers. So what we're gonna do is we're then going to create another vector and it is also going to contain integer values and it is going to be called odd list and what it's going to do is it's going to call a function called change list that is going to receive a vector of numbers let's call this um, list of noms so it's going to receive that list of noms that we just created right there and it's also going to receive a function that is called is it odd and you're gonna have to create that there and what else should it do well it's going to also come in here then and let's just say that it wants to print out list of odds and then it's going to cycle through all of those different items so I'm gonna say uh, get our odd list that was generated and then it's just gonna print all those values out so the I and there you go all right so now your job is to go and create the function called change list as well as the function is it odd you can go ahead and pause your video and give that a try otherwise I am going to create both right now all right so very first thing we want to do is create is it odd so what's it going to do it's going to check if a value is odd or not so of course it's going to be returning a boolean and it's going to receive a value inside of here and it's quite simple it's just going to go if num modulus 2 is equal to zero well in that situation it's going to return false and else it's going to return true so that was pretty easy we went and created our first function that we're going to need then the next function is called change list it's going to receive a list of nums so let's go and just copy this right here so i don't have to type out that long thing all right so it is going to return a vector of integers of course it's called change list and if you guys figure out some cool way of doing what i'm doing here in a different way please list it in the comment field below i find it interesting and other people will find it helpful and interesting as well then we're, see, we're receiving a function what's that function that function is is it odd so we know that we are going to return a boolean type and we know that it is going to receive an integer type all right and i'm just going to call this funk just to keep it nice and simple and then i'm going to create a vector inside of it and an integer vector and it is going to be called odd list and then all i need to do is go full four auto and i 
for all of our list items we want to cycle through. And then I'm going to say if, and then I can just go funk and I, and then after that, if it comes back as true, I am going to go and get our odd list and add that item to our vector like this. Then after I cycle through every single one of those, I can go return odd list and be done. All right, so there is everything. Can I keep get it all on the screen? Nah, too much information. So we'll save it and we'll run it. And you see a list of odds comes back as one, three, and five. So hopefully you guys got that, but if you didn't, don't worry about it. The goal here is just like always to understand the final problem and not necessarily get it right. But if you did get it right, please leave that in the comments and I'll take a look. And now I'm gonna go on and to our second problem for this video. All right, to keep this simple, what I want you to do now is to generate a hundred either heads or tails and then output on the screen the number of heads that you randomly generated as well as the number of tails that you randomly generated. So you can pause your video right now and go and give that a try. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is walk you through the process. Okay, so basically what we would need to do if we wanted to do what I just said is we're going to need to create a function that's going to create a random list using a lim limited number of values, which would be either heads or tails. Then we're gonna have to create another function that checks for the number of matches in that randomly generated list. And then we're going to have to create a random list of heads and tails and then I'll put how many of uh, the heads were generated randomly and how many tails were generated randomly, okay? So what I'm gonna do here first is I'm going to go into main and I'm actually gonna create everything inside of here. So I can go vector and I know I'm gonna use characters cause it's gonna either be heads or tails. And this is going to be possible values. And I know that I'm either going to have a head or I am going to have a tail. Those are the only possible values for my thing that I want to do here. All right, then I said that I wanted to have 100 of them. So I am going to have a list right here, which is going to be a character vector. And I'm going to call this H um, and T list for head and tail list. I'm going to create a function that is going to get H um, and T list. And how it's going to do that is it's going to receive a list of possible values in the way of a vector. And then I'm gonna say that I want a hundred of said values because that's how I described this earlier. And then I'm going to output on our screen the number of heads. And I am also going to, well, of course, I'm gonna to have to go and call another function and it's going to be called get number of matches and I'm going to pass in our list that we went and just generated here as well as specifically what I'm looking for make sure those are single quotes otherwise you will get an error and then we can just go and do a new line on that and then we're going to do exactly the same thing for tails so we can just copy this as well paste that in there get number of tails and then we're going to change this to T instead of H. All right, so there we got that. So now what we need to do is go and create this guy right here, as well as get number of matches. Otherwise, you can do it on your own. All right, so what is get H and T list? What's it going to return? Well, obviously, it's going to return a vector that is full of characters. So we're going to paste that inside of there. And then it's going to be called get H and T list. So let's just copy that, paste that inside of there. And then what it's, is it going to do? Well, it is going to receive this guy right here. So let's just go and copy that and paste that inside of there as well. And what do I want to call this? I'm going to call this possible values. And then we are also going to receive int and I'll just call this number values to generate just because that's really long and very descriptive. All right. So what we want to do here is, well, we are going to, and make sure that you have C time inside of here for this to work. What we are going to do is we are going to generate some random values. So I'm going to go srands and time 
and then null. And I talked about how this is going to help us generate random values based off of the number of seconds in time since uh, January 1st, 1970. There's a interesting thing. All right, so, and we're gonna have a vector of characters and I'm gonna call it H and T list. And then it's going to generate those. How's it gonna do it? Let's go and use this guy. So x is equal to zero and x less than, and this is gonna be number of values to generate. Let's just copy that and paste it in there because I'm feeling lazy. So there we are. And then I'm going to have the value of x increment, of course. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go int and I'm gonna go rand index is gonna be equal to, and I'm gonna go rand, and I'm gonna get the modulus of two because we know that if we do a division or a modulus division by two, that it's impossible to receive a value that is two. We're only gonna receive zeros and ones. So then what I can do is go H and T list and push back and add the, each of those values onto this. And that's just gonna be possible values and rand index. So there we go, we went and we generated that. And then we got our list at the end here, so we can just say return, and it's going to be H and T list. Where is that H and T list? There we go, copy this guy, paste it inside of there. All right, so there we got it handled so that we are generating a random list that is going to contain only H's and T's. Now what we need to do is receive a list and then sum the number for each of those matching characters. So I'm gonna go int, and this is called get number of matches. So copy this guy right here, paste it inside of there, and it's going to receive standard vector. And of course that is a character list, and I'm just gonna call it list. And then it's also going to receive character, which is going to be, I'm gonna call this value to find. And then we can go like this. And then what else can we do? Well, we're gonna go and find num of matches, which is gonna start off at zero, of course. And then we are just gonna cycle through that. And of course, we're gonna get characters out of this list it's a character list obviously and whoops 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 what did i do list there we are all right so what can we do well we're going to cycle through there we're going to get each of those individual characters and then we're just going to say if c is equal to value to find and then we can just say num of matches and increment it pretty simple all right and we can get out of there and then what we can do is we can say return num of matches and there we are okay and then we can test it and see if it worked and it looks like it did so bring this over here and the first time we rolled we received 51 heads and 49 tails let's do it again 39 and 61 and 50 and 50 and 52 and 48 and so forth and so on so hopefully you guys enjoyed that and you were able to work out those problems and like always please leave your questions and comments below Otherwise, till next time.